We have 123 definitions of life, and some people are saying we don't have any definition, we only have descriptions of life. And, and that's true, and that's true. So think about it for two minutes. We are looking for something we don't know it is, but we have a few clues about the nature of life. There are some really good theories. The first one was Schrodinger, right, uh, in the 40s. Right now there is a guy named uh, Jeremy England. It's another biophysical uh, theory of life. It says life is the inevitable result of thermophysics. This is the best way to beat entropy, to fight entropy. But when you look at what we are doing, if you want to know what the nature of life is, look at our languages. And they can be very different languages, but they all have the same purpose, right? Exchange information, understand, you know, store information, and, and uh, also whether it is with somebody at the outside mm -hmm. or thoughts in yourself. That's the same thing the cell was doing. But now when you're looking at life and at the structure of our languages, life started with an atom. So it's an atom. They got together to create inorganic molecules. Then you have complex inorganic molecules. Then you get to organic molecules, complex inorga uh, organic molecules, and then you have RNA, DNA, etc. Look at the structure of our language. We created alphabets, letters. That's your atom. Then we put them together to create syllables, right? Those syllables get together to create words. Words tell you something, but they are nothing without a verb that gives the direction. That's RNA and DNA. And, and then you can put all the complements you want. Our languages are built exactly as life is built. We are repeating patterns. I call this the Mandelbrot universe and the <laughs> fractal universe yes. because this is exactly what it is. Uh, I, I would say that as much as I do believe to sending probes, to explore the universe, I say we should also look inward to find the, uh, uh, the answer to some of the profound question of who we are, what's life, what's the nature of life, because we are expressing life. So searching not for life, but for the nature of life. The oh. nature of life, absolutely. I am more interested in that because the day we understand the nature of life, then we have a universal um, biosignature. And it doesn't matter whether this life responds to the same kind of biochemical processes as we do, although it makes sense. I, I told you about the generational aspect of the bricks of life, the stuff we are made of. The sun is part of the youngest generation of stars. And the first two generations of stars didn't produce the kind of uh, elements we are made of. They were stars that were either uh, uh, without metal, just made of helium and hydrogen, or poor in metals. So the stars died off, and stars like the sun were born from those. And this is why we have elements like carbon, hydrogen, uh, oxygen, etc. cetera, now. Um, and, and that's the life we are built on. So I, I think it's not stupid to be looking for something that looks like us because right now in the universe this is the stuff that's the most abundant and we see with the exoplanet uh, with Kepler with Tess and, and and now with James Webb we see that there are many many different type of planets that may be habitable in the habitable zone of their stars there are countless stars like the sun but more interestingly en enough there are other type of stars where you do have habitable zone as well, and where the duration of the stars are sometimes a thousand times more than our sun. So you can imagine all sorts of things, and you can imagine what type of life would be on, around those stars. Uh, the biochemistry might be quite similar, in fact, and especially for the simple life, because simple life starts really quickly uh, on Earth. So my take on this is that the universe is full of cyanobacteria, but as far as intelligent life, uh, it takes more time. 